Please welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the that we are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first video. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I am so excited to have each of you worshiping with us today. Happy Sunday goes out to all of my sailors, young adults, college students, and all of the graduates of 2021. And happy Wednesday goes out to all of my young, young, young viewers who continue to watch and support No Walls. I love you guys so much. Um, thank you to my son, Trey, for such a powerful message last week blessed my soul and got me to thinking and so I just thank him so much for that about for being real and for being honest and transparent um, because it did in fact bless my soul um, and it made a difference in my life and in the lives of so many people um, so we are going to jump right into the word of God um, so today's message we are going to do a precursor to our fast. Remember, we are starting a fast next Sunday, July the 18th through Saturday, July 24th. So it is a week-long fast. It's not 21 days. It's not 30 days. It's not 60, 90. This is a fast that we are going to start next Sunday, July 18th through the 24th. So make sure you write this down. Um, I will have it on the site. Um, this week so you'll be able to look again but this is a really good opportunity to get a pen and paper you can pause this you can come back to it and you can write down um, the fast and I hope that this um, this message is more of um, explaining fasting and preparing you for next week okay um, so we are going to be coming from Isaiah 58 Isaiah 58 verses 6 through 8 and it says is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the lord will be your rear guard that is isaiah 58 6 through 8 um, and so today's message is let's stop playing church let's just stop playing let's stop playing church um, that's today's message. Um, this scripture is, um, you know, it's a really good fasting scripture. We are used, we are accustomed to and used to the scriptures in which, um, if you remember in the message stuck, um, when I ministered stuck like a year ago, um, we talked about, you know, uh, being stuck between two truths. I believe I believe you can, God. I can. I believe you can heal. I just don't know that you will. And so the Father, um, if you go back to stuck, that message, Jesus had just come off the Mount of uh, Transfiguration, the Mountain of Transfiguration, and he came down and the Father was trying to get the disciples um, to cast the demon out of his son, and they could not do it. And the Father approaches Jesus and he says, listen, um, I need this demon to be taken out of my son. It's literally trying to kill him. It throws him to the fire. It tries to drown him. It's done all these things to my son, and he needs to be delivered. And Jesus was like, what's all the fuss about? And he's like, well, I went to your disciples, and they could not do this. They have been, at this point, the disciples had been casting demons out. This is the New Testament. They had been casting demons out, but for some reason, they could not do it. And the father says, can you do it, Jesus? And Jesus is like, it's not that I can't. <laughs> and the father is simply saying, you know, help my unbelief. Help the part of me that doesn't believe. You could help me by doing this thing for me. And the father is just saying, help my unbelief. 
before before the father says help my unbelief jesus is a little aggravated by saying listen disciples lee you're a disciple those of you watching and have uh, chosen to serve jesus christ as your personal lord and savior you are a disciple and he says to them how long like You've seen me move. You've seen me do these things. What else I got to do, you know? And so Jesus uh, is able to tell the demon, I know who you are. He's very specific with them. Leave. And then later the disciple says, okay, Jesus, we've been doing that. Like, like we've been able to cast out demons. Why could we not do it this time? And he says, because some things, some healing, some deliverances, they only come through fasting and praying and so we love that scripture when we start to fast we say hey you know some things come through fasting and praying and that is true and that's a really good scripture um to use um there's also in the new testament um when there, the question arose about why um do the pharisees fast why you know why don't your disciples fast and and jesus is like because i'm right here <laughs> I'm right here. That's why, you know, but there will come a day when I'm not here and they will need to fast. Um, But this comes from Isaiah is actually a prophet. And this happens in the Old Testament. And remember, the Old Testament um, really is insight into the future, into the New Testament. So the Old Testament tells it. The New Testament fulfills it. Um, And so we are in the Old Testament today with Isaiah. And um, this fast, they were kind of like, you know, God, we have been fasting and praying. You may feel this way. We've been fasting and praying. I, I fasted. I don't do fastly because I've done them before and nothing has happened. But in this passage, if you read the whole thing, God is basically saying, but your motives are wrong. You've been fasting and praying so that I can say you're right in a situation. But that's not what fasting and praying is about. And so in Isaiah 58, he says, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not, is the fast not, to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer? So here God is saying, listen, even to the disciples, stop, stop playing church. You may say, well, I'm not playing church. Yeah, yeah. Some of us are pretending. Let me, let me go ahead and give you what our fast is. I'm going to tell you what we are going to do next week and then I'll get more into the word uh, and more into uh, why we fast so next week beginning on Sunday um, the time of the fast will not change so Sunday through Saturday um, we will be able to consume food and drinks from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. only so you can eat from 7 (laughs) a.m. to 7 p.m. That does not mean you have to eat all day. does not mean you have to eat three times a day. It just means that during those 12 hours, you can consume food and drink, okay? Um, But on Sunday of next week, you will be able to eat anything. We're going to we're going to start this fast off from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. next Sunday, the 18th. And you can eat anything. Yes, you can have sweets. You can have carbs. You can have soda. You can have whatever you want from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. OK. Um, on Monday, though, things will change. On Monday, we are going to take sweets away. Still 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., but you will not be able to consume sweets. That will no longer. Sweets includes sodas, um, artificial juices. Um, You can consume fruits because that has been asked before. Yes, you can have fruits. Even though fruits are a natural sweet, um, you can consume fruits. So um, those of you who are like, I have to have sweets, maybe for a health reason or whatever, you can consume fruit. Okay. Um, But no sugary drinks. Um, and no candy bars, cakes, you know, nothing like that. 
and don't and and don't try to trick God by saying, okay, this is doesn't have sugar, but it's just like like we're gonna be committed to this. Um, let me let me let me finish this. So Monday, no sweets. So once Monday starts with no sweets, it's no sweets. Monday through the rest of the fast, no sweets. Um, on Tuesday, um, it's going to be no sweets again, like I said, and you can consume. Uh, meat wise only fish and chicken so your meats will change on Tuesday if you say I don't eat beef anyway I don't eat pork anyway okay great good for you but we will only consume uh, you know fruits vegetables carbs fish and chicken you can have all those things but no beef no pork no sweets starting Tuesday that starts Tuesday and it goes all the way through Saturday okay I hope you're staying with me and I hope you're writing this down or at least we'll go back or pause it <laughs> and write it down. So Sunday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you can have anything. Starting Monday, that's when we will eliminate sweets from our diets. Um, still only 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can have anything on Monday except sweets. On Tuesday, you still can't have the sweets. You still have to consume food between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. But now in terms of meat, we are eliminating pork, beef, any just, let me just put it this way because there may be other meats that I'm not thinking of, but only fish and only chicken can you consume in terms of meat. Wednesday, starting Wednesday, we will eliminate carbs. So that's rice, potatoes, mac and cheese, bread <laughs> um cereals are carbs i believe um so that's why we're doing this a week in advance so that you can kind of get your mind right you can prepare you can write it down what you will consume um write the vision and make it plain write this down write what you plan to eat every day so that you can keep this uh fast going so wednesday um and thursday will be the same so Wednesday and Thursday, we will have already eliminated sweets. We will have already eliminated uh, the beef and the pork and other meats with the exception of fish and chicken. So at this point on Wednesday and Thursday, you are only consuming. Wednesdays and Thursdays, you are only consuming fruits, vegetables, chicken, and fish. No carbs, no sweets, no beef, no pork. Friday and Saturday... On Friday and Saturday, you will consume fruits and vegetables only. So yes, green beans, you know, collard greens, salads. You can have salads, but it's uh, strawberries, bananas, orange. Like, like help yourself. Fruits and vegetables from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday to end our fast. So 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You have a whole week now. Depends on when you watch <laughs> today's message. You'll have a whole week to prepare, to grocery shop, to pray, to get your heart and your mind right to do this. Um, and then from 7, beginning at 7 p.m. every night, this may be the bigger sacrifice. The bigger sacrifice is beginning at 7 p.m. You will not be able to watch television TV's got to be turned off. Whether it's on TV, if you say, oh, well, I had Netflix on my phone, you can't watch Netflix, <laughs> HBO Max, you can't watch any of these things. You cannot watch movies and TV shows and programs. You cannot do that beginning at 7 p.m. every night. And no social media, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Snapchat, Facebook, all that. No. Um no well i want to watch a message on youtube no 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 social media um this is a fast um and again um i'm putting it up here but i also will have it on the website and you have a week to prepare i'm not asking you to do this for the rest of your life I'm not asking you to do this for the rest of the month. I'm not asking you, you know, to, to make this commitment for the rest of the year. This is a seven-day request. Fasting, if you're trying to lose weight, you that will automatically happen on this fast. 
but that is fasting for the wrong reason for what we're doing. We are not fasting to lose physical weight. That is just going to be one of the results of the fast, but it's not why you should fast. If your heart and your mind are going to enter into this fast to lose weight, you're probably going to miss the power and the move of God because that's not what we're doing. We're not going on a one-week diet, (laughs) okay? Fasting is reverencing God through self-control and self-denial for seven days. If God were to walk into the room right now and ask you to do this for him, if he were to ask you, like face-to-face, for seven days I want you to do this because I have some things I want to deliver you from, I want to heal you from, would you do it? Has he done enough for us, for us to deny our flesh to draw close to him? Shirley Caesar has this song, and if you are my age or older, you probably know it very well. If you're younger than me, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm relatively up there. Um, I'm going to call it wisdom. I'm very wise. <laughs> um, the song is I Remember I Remember Mama. And you can look it up on YouTube because you have a whole week. You can look it up on YouTube. Um, and I'm not telling you to stay away from social media uh, or television next week. We're talking about at a certain time. So those of you going, oh, I have to, I'll die if I don't watch TV. You can do it from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. next week. But just at 7 p.m., we're turning it all off to focus on God but she has this great 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 she did a she did a lot of testimonies and in this um you have to watch the long version of it but in the long version of it she does this testimony and the testimony talks about you know her mom's constantly getting on to them because they're constantly playing church you know um you know pretending you know they're going to church you know yes praise God I love you God yeah and clapping and singing and all and mimicking the older people in church who may have caught the Holy Spirit, you know, may have done whatever. And so the mom's like, you need to quit playing church. (laughs) Um, And so one day she describes her testimony and she says that um, her and her siblings were outside in the backyard playing church. Um, The brother was the preacher and the three girls were sitting on the step and she's like, yeah, hallelujah, praise God, you know, playing church, pretending. She's a kid. So she was pretending. And I think she said she's 12 years old, so she was literally pretending to be in church service. And she said, and her brother says, uh, I want you to say Jesus three times. And she said she jumped up the first time and said, Jesus. You know, how, you know, yeah, Jesus. She jumped up the second time and said, Jesus. But when she jumped up the third time, she said something got a hold of her. And she said it was just like fire shut up in her bones and um her siblings said mama she out here playing church again and her mom came to the door and saw tears running down her face and saw her jumping and shouting and and filled with the holy spirit her mom said you surely not playing church anymore and that's where i want us to be i want us This next week to get so close to God that we stop pretending, that we stop saying, I love Jesus Christ. We're wearing these crosses around our necks, but we forget every day what he did and why he did it. We're so busy worrying about our flesh and ourselves and who's being nice to us that we forget there's a whole world out there that needs us. And he's saying, I got you. I need you to go get them. I think I've mentioned it before. Superman, uh, the original Superman, the very, very, very first Superman with uh, Christopher Reeves. I believe that's his name. Uh, He was Superman. And Lois Lane is falling from a building. And when she's falling from a building, he swoops up and he catches her. And she's looking like, and he says, don't worry. He said, I got you. And she says, well, you got me. (laughs) <laughs> but who's got you? And the Holy Spirit has us. And we are going to spend time next week together on one accord. 
We are going to be asking God for wisdom. He says if we ask him for wisdom, he's going to give it to us. We're going to be asking him for wisdom. Remember, he says, I, I have to leave so that the comforter can come. But listen to what the Holy Spirit is going to do. He says he's going to direct you in all things. He's going to remind you. And some of us won't allow that to happen. We are so stubborn and we are so into self and we are so into we know what's right and we know what's best. And and God said no. And, you know, maybe he didn't say no permanently. Maybe he was saying, wait, we didn't let him finish. He said no before he could say, (laughs) you know, the rest of it. We just cut him off and said, "Okay, well, God says no. So let me do it myself. And he's like, it's not time. So we are going to be asking God to really order our steps. We're going to be asking him to show us that God, when trouble comes, that trouble is for my good. And so I'm going to praise you for that trouble. We're going to really get so close to God that we understand that being thrown into the pit is to bring us into power like Joseph. So we are going to be asking God next week for wisdom. And on the website, I'm going to give you guys enough tools. I will give them to you this week. I will I will start putting them on the site this week so that you can start looking and researching and understanding and preparing yourself for this fast. Sometimes fasts are just, hey, we're going to be fasting this day to this day and everybody's excited. But no, 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 no. We're not going to do the fake laughing. Hee haw, hee haw. We're going to lose 30 pounds. no. We are going to really reverence God by denying ourselves. And if you say, well, I don't want to do it because I'm not. I would rather and it is better for you to not make this commitment than to make this commitment and to not do it. It is it is it is not okay to say, well, I'll do it. But, you know, I'm going to watch TV. No, deny yourself. You have a whole week to prepare You have a whole week to really seek God. God, Holy Spirit, help me in this fast. And so the first thing we're going to do is ask for wisdom. Because in that wisdom, a lot of us are trying to figure out what is God calling me to do? Is this relationship that I'm in, is this of God? Is this relationship that I'm getting out of, is God pushing me out of it? Or is he just saying, well, you said for better or worse, and you're in worse, and you made this commitment, you better stay. Or this relationship I'm trying to get into, I'm happy. But God knows five years down the road, is this of God? And we are going to be asking God these questions. God, this job, I think is best for me. And he's saying, no, it's not best for you. It's great for right now, but I've heard things you have not heard, and it is not going to work out in the end. So we are going to be asking him for the for wisdom. Should I move? Is this place, am I in the right city? Am I in the right house? Am I in the right environment? What should I do? And that's where wisdom is going to be important. We're also going to be asking God for healing. Yes, physical healing. Yes, my knees hurt. We're going to be asking God to heal our knees, our backs. We're going to be asking God to heal our backs. You may have diabetes. He really can. I know what the doctor said. I know historically, but we're serving God. I'm like, he's God. He actually raised people from the dead, including himself. So there's nothing he can't repair that's internal because he created you. So it's possible. Um, and we're going to be asking him for healing. We're going to ask him to, to, to use his blood to cleanse us from the inside out, to make us whole spiritually. Because if he can make us whole spiritually, remember, all these people that he was healing, they were being made whole. Not physically whole. That was a result of the spiritual healing. And some of us don't think the way we should think. Some of us, we can't get our minds off of drugs. Some of us, we can't get our minds off of alcohol. Some of us, we can't get our minds off of pornography. Some of us, 
can't get our minds off of pride. Some of us are just prideful people. Don't tell me what to do. I'm right. I tried to tell you. I told you so. I don't know why they won't listen to me. Well, I'm going to do it this way. Pride. We we refuse to humble ourselves. We don't want anybody but us to be right. We don't want anybody to get the extra point. We don't want anybody to, to say to us, I told you so. I actually dealt with that uh, this past week. And I was told to do something that would make someone else more comfortable. But I wanted them to do it my way. And I was set like, no, you know, don't touch my stuff. Like, this is the right way. The problem was I was right. Okay. And they were right. And I stood there and I was furious because I was right and they were right. But I was like, I don't want to make you happy by doing it your way. I want you to make me happy. <laughs> I'm like, do it my way or just leave my stuff alone. <laughs> like, you know. And in that moment, it was like the Holy Spirit was saying, do you see how you feel? Do you see how you feel? Do you see how you feel? Get this feeling. Get this feeling like you're about to cry. And, the, you know, there's a lump in your throat. This, this feeling, this is pride. And it was like, what will it hurt you to do what they're asking you to do? How are you going to be injured? How are you going to lack? You're going to gain when you stop trying to be right about everything. Y'all, I had to swallow and say, (sighs) I'll do it your way. Ugh. <laughs> Burning up inside. <laughs> no, this one. I was like, but then later, it allowed me to be transparent with them. And I said, I struggle with pride because I want to be right. And I want it to be done my way. And I realized it didn't have to be my way. Like sometimes, We are holding on because we don't want anybody else to be right or to tell us what to do. Or for us, even sometimes the fear is, did I look stupid because of my way? Did I look dumb? Do they do they not value me? And we have to really ask God for healing. We have to ask God to break that chain of pride. And when I humble myself. When I was able to say, gosh, don't go on it. <laughs> and I did it their way. I found out later they were like, oh, well, actually, I did it your way, too. I was like, what? Like, yeah. And I was like, Ugh. and it turns out nobody was right. But by me humbling myself, I later learned that they took on that same approach. And it mended you may you may not realize how many relationships you can heal and mend when you, child of God, you Christian, you ordained, you chosen, you, you know, I'm refined by the Lord. Are you? Then humble yourself. Be wrong. It's okay to say I'm wrong. It's okay to say I'm sorry. It's okay to say, let me be transparent with you. I got to get over being stuck in my way. And we are going to fast so that the chains of pridefulness are broken in so many of us. Not just physical healing, but 100% spiritual healing. So that we can be made whole. We are going to be fasting. Asking God to forgive us. We are going to spend a week in repenting before God. We got a lot to do. Starting at 7 p.m. So you ain't going to really have time (laughs) to watch TV. (laughs) We're going to repent. You can do it today. You don't have to wait to repent. I don't know when the Lord is returning. But next week at 7 p.m. You're asking me what are we going to be really be praying for and fasting. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be reverencing God by really getting to the core 
of our past and of our present and of our future and asking God to forgive us of our sins, all of them. There are some things that you are doing. You're making promises that you're not keeping. That's not of God. We should not be making promises that we cannot keep. And so we're going to be asking God to forgive us for the sins that we really don't, that we're really not fully aware of that we are doing. Um, and so we are going to be asking God um, for uh, him to forgive us. Um, and then finally, we are going to be praying for somebody else. I, can, I hope it's a lot of somebody else's. But this week, I want you to think about somebody that is in need of God. Um, they need to feel his presence. They need to see him. They need to choose him. Um, and this is not about you reaching out to them next week. This is about we're going to all be standing in agreement for these things. For the wisdom, uh, for the healing, for the forgiveness, and for somebody else. And we're going to pray mightily for these people for seven days. This is the equivalent of us marching around <laughs> on the wall of Jericho and it coming down. There's somebody out there that you are thinking of right now. And they are mad at God. Um, they don't know God. They're pretending to know God. It may be somebody that you've sat with at church, you know, pre-COVID. And you know they came out of routine. There's a lot of people that went to church because I grew up going to church. I'm going to church. But they have not received the Holy Spirit. And it could be more than one person. And I don't need you to call them and be like, yeah, you've been coming to church and I'm going to be praying. <laughs> We're going to let the Holy Spirit do that. But I want you to pray for them. There are a lot of people, you know, like I previously said, that we're praying for that have illnesses. Like there is a young lady. Um, I believe she is in California. Um, and one of my uh, sailors reached out to me and asked that we pray for her. And I'm going to ask you to pray for her. She has... Uh, she's suffering from endometriosis. And so we know that God can heal her. And so No Walls is praying for you, sweetheart. We, we are definitely praying for you. Um, and so we want to pray for people that have physical ailments. But we also want to pray for people that we know are struggling in their relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to do that. And we're going to spend seven days doing this. And honestly... If it doesn't bring you to tears, if it doesn't bring you to a place of stillness, if it doesn't bring you to a place of just sitting in the darkness alone with God, you may not be fasting. You may not be taking this seriously because when you fast and you begin to deny self and the Holy Spirit comes, it's just it's something about it. It'll make you run for no reason. It'll make you say, yes, God, for no reason. Just, just feel. I don't want this fast to be difficult. And we're doing this a week in advance because we have played church before fasting. Oh, everybody, we're doing the Daniel fast starting January the 1st. <laughs> Everybody's going to do the Daniel fast. Are you doing the Daniel fast? I'm doing the Daniel fast. Oh, you look good. Oh, yeah. But girl, I'm struggling. It was so hard. Not no, that's not what this is. This is not funny. This is not funny and it's not fun. This is serious. And I'm using today's message. I need you women to put your makeup on and comb your hair. I need you to look presentable. Men, please, don't look scraggly. The word of God tells us don't look like you're, you're fasting. Like, like put, get yourself together. Get up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you for this fast. Thank you for the God, I can't wait to see you tonight at 7. I can't wait to see what you do today during the day. And then when you pray at night, pray for the next day. Be excited about God. Don't go to work going, hey, you know what? I'm fasting. I'm going, I'm going, oh, there's going to be, y'all going to see a different me. I'm going through, no, 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 no. 
Though we're doing a fast together, it is still being done in secret. We're going to go through this together, but to the world, we're going to look like the God we serve, that he can do anything, that we're beautiful and we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And I do encourage you this. Um, I, I'm available. If you if you email me, I will I will help you again. I'm going to put everything on the website, but um, I don't want this to be something you don't accomplish. This is not this fast is to teach you how to fast so that you fast on your own regularly. I'm not trying to make this, you know, I talked to God about this for a long time. People are saying, when, when is the fast? When are you going to tell us the details? I had to keep talking to God. God, I want us to do this and I want us to accomplish it. Show me how we can do this together. And this is how he gave it to me to, to give to you. This is, this is supposed to be difficult in terms of self-denial, but it's not to, to be so difficult that you fail. I don't want you to fail. God does not want you to fail. God needs you to be successful in this fast. Deny yourself for seven days. On day eight, if you're not changed and you go back to eating everything in the world and you go back to watching everything in the world and you go right back into it, that's between you and God. But this fast ought to be a lifestyle change. Not just in what you eat, but in how you go about your day-to-day and your prayer life. It ought to do something with your relationship with God. It's not to be difficult. You can do this. You can accomplish this. You can fulfill this. If you are in a home and you're married, if you are home and you have children who can do this fast, by all means, invite them to do it. Allow them to watch this video. Share with them the fast. Share with them what we're going to be praying for. You have a week. Don't force anybody to do it. But it's not a bad idea to have others that you know have been seeking God to join in this fast with you. But this is not to obtain a car. This is not to get a house. This is not, again, to lose weight. Nope. We are going to be getting close to God. That's what a fast is. It's reverencing him through self control and self-denial you need food and so we're going to deny our flesh certain foods to just draw closer to God if you don't know who Jesus Christ is um, today is a really good day to know who he is um, you can reach out to us at nowallsnowwhat.com. You can email me at nowallsnowwhat at gmail.com and I will be glad to walk with you and talk with you about who Jesus Christ is. And it's really easy to accept him. You just have to admit that I'm a sinner and I am in need of a Savior. That I'm in need of Jesus Christ and believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Would you please bow your head and close your eyes? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, God, just saying thank you so much for today. Thank you for sending Jesus. God, as we enter into this fast next week, God, everyone who is listening, everyone who makes this commitment to you, God, I ask that your Holy Spirit would help them, that you would just help them keep this commitment and remind them that you are walking with them, God. And I ask at the end of this fast, God, that you would do a new thing, that you would change lives that we will make a difference in this world and in this community as a result of us denying self to reverence you god for these next seven days these and all other blessings we ask in your precious son jesus name amen amen i love you i'm so excited about next week don't forget i'll put the details on the website invite someone to do this with you okay i love you so much Bye-bye.